Amen. Now the time. That is good. I want to welcome you here to the church where the word of God makes here and I promise. Blessed are they that come hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They shall be filled. Yeah. So we pray you came tonight with your cup turned up. Amen. Amen. Have you had a good week? Yes. So far. So far. Any complaints? No. Wish it was anything better than it was? Better than last week. <laughs> <laughs> They're better than last week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you got a nice one. Last week. We're missing last week. <coughs> it's better than last week, ain't it? That's right. right. So it's great to see you here this this evening, and uh, <coughs> I know the Lord's gonna bless you for being here tonight. We like to go to the Lord in prayer. If you got prayer requests, like to take those. If you need prayer, you can just come right down and ask. Do the same Thanks, and praise my daughter also. Um, they told they told her she had the they diagnosed her with the flu, but um, today she was really having a hard time breathing and coughing real bad. So the doctor sent her to the hospital for a chest X-ray because they think that she might have pneumonia. Mm. Um, I haven't heard nothing yet. <coughs> How old is your daughter? Forty-two. Forty-two. <coughs> like Barbara called earlier and said that she had to go get Kelly today. She was sick. Okay. She's staying with Barbara. No, she's staying at her house, and Barbara's keeping the little one. <coughs> Trying to keep the little one from getting sick. Oh Lord. <coughs> Let's keep uh, the others in the church in the. Uh, your Smith family, I know Greg, I believe Greg's still out of town, working out of town, and Miss Doris, if you want to keep her lifted up. Um, Sharon and them may, may come later, I'm not sure, I haven't heard, but we want to pray for them. Uh, my buddy Daniel and, and his family, keep them pray, praying for them. Uh, they told me that Chelsea's uh, you know, she's in, she's improving a little, you know, gradually getting better. The the mother in law, she's you know, has good days and bad days, you know, with her husband passing away and um just with their family, you know, we want to keep lifting them up. It's uh it's really hard no matter where you are if you uh if you're not actually in church, you know, uh or or have somebody that you can have uh, confide in and talk to everybody needs someone that they can talk to and confide in uh even just a friend you know somebody that can talk to and tell how you're feeling and but sometimes you you think it's or you feel like it's a lot worse than it really is after you talk it out sometimes you feel a lot better and it's sort of vent you you've ever done that after you vent you're like well, i'm okay now i've been it out yeah um, so we want to pray so this uh, Saturday we'll be gathering here about 530 and uh, then next week next Wednesday we'll not have church I'll be in Florida uh, wait a minute no. well, that's two weeks that's two weeks from now yeah that's after after we do our after the 20th after Christmas, after that, that Wednesday after Christmas, I'll be out of town. But um, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so pray. Go ahead and, I want to go ahead and lift that up in prayer as we're traveling, and uh, praying for the family that's down in Mexico as they're traveling. Uh, keep Dad in in prayer. Uh, he's doing good. Just you know, we'll, we'll pray for him. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Yeah, Greg sent a message. He said a young lady they I know through association Jessica Falk is being diagnosed with a rare blood disorder. Uh, terrible. Is that uh, Sharon? Greg. Greg. So somebody they know has a rare blood disorder. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I got a question. I've been having trouble with my jaw hurting. And it's hard to chew sometimes. Mm. Don't know what's wrong with it. What's wrong with it, Judy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I ain't him yet. <laughs> Let's go to, go to the Lord in prayer. Lay my thumb lift it in this square and fix it somehow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in Jesus' name to give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. I thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord God, and uh, being able to come and associate together and pull together in Jesus' name, Father, that, that we can come and encourage one another and hear the word of God and, and leave and, and know that it's uh, it's been a better day just by hearing your word. We thank you, Lord, that Brother Greg is able to join in by social media and others that may join in later. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for them. Uh, we lift up prayer requests before you, Lord, today. Some here in the church that's not feeling 100% and some that uh, uh, are at home that, that's not feeling good, Lord. We lift up the ones that are here tonight, Brother Randall, Lord Jesus, and... and uh, uh, and Miss Millie continue to, to touch her body to get better. <clears throat> Lord God, we lift up, Father God, the request of uh, up the, the people here tonight that you would be with uh, Brother Eugene. Help him, Lord God, to continue to resist this uh, sickness and this cough. Help him to be able to rest. Father God, may you get that uh, little itchy and tickle thing out of there that he'll be able to, uh, <clears throat> Lord, that we know how irritating it can be. Lord, we lift up uh, Judy Storm, uh, co-worker, Lord, that, uh, who lost her, her father, Lord, that you just be with them. Father God, for uh, Barbara, as we hear she went to pick up Kelly, we ask you, God, to be with the family. Lord, we pray for uh, Brother Greg's request of uh, his someone he knows with a, a blood disorder. Father God, we know that, that you're the healer of all diseases and that you can do all things. <clears throat> Father God, we lift up uh, the request of the man at work today who, uh, you remember the name, Lord, I, I can't remember the name right off, but we pray, Father, for this family that, uh, that, that was died, someone was diagnosed with cancer. <laughs> Lord, we pray, Father God, that you'd be with uh, Miss Doris, Father God, and that you'd help uh, strengthen her, yeah. be with the Smith family, Lord Jesus, and be with the others, Lord, that uh, of our church here at Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. We pray, Father, for the family down in Texas and Mexico, that you would strengthen them and bless them. I pray for my family, Lord, here. Father God, also, that, what, that in all of our families, Lord, we lift up and we ask you to heal the sick and to save the lost. Yes. Father God, we know, Lord, that we... Uh, <laughs> take th some things for granted but Lord let us be cautious tonight and be careful to give you the praise honor and glory for all things we ask you to bless us tonight in this service that you would give us an ear to hear a heart to receive and a mind to understand Father God help us Lord as, as, as David says search me O God and know my heart try me and know my thoughts see if there's any wicked way in me and leave me in thy way everlasting that as we come into your presence tonight we can come with a pure heart we ask you to, to prepare us and use us for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is an awesome God. Amen. Uh, do you know that? You know, it, it's, it's sometimes we we hear that. We hear th things about the Lord. And, and sometimes we know about more from what people teach us. Amen. What, what, perhaps what you learn in Sunday school, what you might hear me preach. Uh, but do you know the Lord personally, uh, maybe not in great depth, but how, how much do you know about the Lord? You know, do you communicate? Me, in other words, do you pray? If you're not, and it, prayer is not always this. Praying is just communicating. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
ugly. As you get older, uh, I never, I don't remember thinking this as a kid, but some kids think this nowadays. Uh, why am I here? Why do I do I matter? Does my life matter? <coughs> You know, as we get older, we have, we question that, and uh, as we're parents, you know, we, we, or we, between husbands and wives, or anybody at that church, in the community, in the world, do I matter? You know, why, I'm, what difference does, does it make if I live or die? But I want to tell you tonight that God's got a special purpose for everyone. Amen. 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 And, and he allowed people to be born. <clears throat> Because he had a purpose for them. You know? <clears throat> Life uh, and birth is is a miracle. Some things we take for granted that, that took, like I told the church, it took us 14 years to have Jeffrey. And you think of all the tests, all the things, you that you everything's got to be just right. Mm -hmm. And like, how in the world could anybody? have children and you got some that have a quiver full, you know. <laughs> and, but but is uh but you this song, the song we because he lives. That's why we live because he lives. He, after you know of course two thousand years ago Amen. is when Christ walked on this earth. Amen? Amen. Still alive, the Bible says at the right hand of God the Father. And, and all that's a whole nother sermon. Amen? But right now, we're here. <coughs> some of us, day, uh, one day at a time. You know, some of us is uh, one minute at a time. You know, uh, one problem at a time. You know, some of us, we, we go through different things. But we sometimes have that question, how can I make it through? How... It, things just pile on us sometimes. I opened up tonight to say, how, how's your week been doing? And uh, could it be better? Yeah, things could be better, but you know, we're, we're, we've got it pretty good when you compare it to some people's lives. Amen? But we're blessed tonight to be in the Lord's house. I do have something I'd like to share with you tonight, I, when the Lord gives me something, uh, I know it's not by accident, amen, and that, uh, and I know it's not by uh, coincidence or just for me, <coughs> sometimes he gives me something just for me, amen, amen. but as, uh, as a pastor and as someone that wants to do a work for him, uh, what he gives me, I know he wants me to share. And that's the same way it is with you. When God gives you something, God gives it something not not always just for you. Now, sometimes it's just for you. If it's like correction, you know, some instruction. But sometimes the, the joy, the, the kingdom of God of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost or just feeling the, a bubbling or perhaps the Lord gives you a certain word to just put on your spirit and next thing you know you meet somebody at work that's going through a hard time you know that, that just matches the same word the Lord gave me this morning in my prayer time you know so okay go ahead if you would open up to the book of Isaiah chapter 9 uh, this is a, a very popular scripture but the Lord is I was meditating on it this morning and reading several scriptures besides this, but this is sort of where we're going to hang out tonight. Uh, I am thankful I did uh, finish the, the first class, uh, Introduction to Theology, and finish with the 96. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, waiting to... I signed up immediately for the next class and then I canceled it because I wanted to wait till after Christmas. Uh, it's, uh, that's what sort of hurt me the other time. I took this class and then I'm having to do other, I'm 
not just having to, but wanted to do other things. And I cram, had to cram up this last two weeks to make sure I could finish. And uh, so I was like, well, cancel the class till the first of the year so I could, one, I want to see the grades because the school is in Canada. And so it's a King's Wood University out of Canada. So I want to see the grades actually post. It is a Wesleyan College, but I want to see it post into the district here and say, okay, I'm, I'm getting credit for the class, so I'll go, I can sign up for the next one, you know. Um, but it was, a, it was a good class, and it's uh, some things I read, I'm like, why am I reading this? You know, it's uh, uh, because the, the course uh, is all about trying to teach you how to think like a Wesleyan pretty much mm -hmm. and uh, parts of the course I got aggravated because it was putting down other denominations and uh, I didn't like that mm -hmm. so I made some remarks <laughs> and uh, such as that's why I choose non-denominational mm -hmm. because you try to you know it looks like you're trying to judge me because I don't believe exactly or I believe a little different and so this is what I want to share with you before we get to this scripture. It's okay to believe a little different. Because I want people to come into the church here at Pleasant Grove that you can believe a little different. It's okay, you church, if you believe a little different than I do. And, uh, and vice versa. And it's okay if you go to the West End District and believe a little different because we're all growing. It may be eventually that you might believe the same way that the others believe in, you might not. You might be the light that everybody else has to look up to. That the way you believe is the right way. Because there's a lot of scripture that is subject to interpretation. And a lot of people that believe it's this way or that way. So, sort of like Sunday school, how I don't read the Sunday school lesson before I preach. I've got a list of questions that I was completing, so I don't read the bottom question. I answer one question at a time, right? So I answer this one question, and I give, and I'm as honest as I can be and give him my best, and I answered to the way I thought. Then I got down here, and then it says, no, 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 if you think like this, then you're, you're a Calvinist. Well, one thing is I, I've never studied about John Calvin. Some of you probably have. But that's, a, like, that's the way Calvinists think. I said, well, of course, that's where I said, well, if you read my above answer, <laughs> you would think that I'm a Calvinist because of the way I answered some of these questions. And, I, and that's why I don't, because somebody, because of the way you believe, they try to categorize you. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of why I said Sunday, uh, because I have already had answered that question, right? That's why I said Sunday, I want to be a Christian. I want to be known that I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, the, but the, the school's great. It made me think outside the box. Made me uh, be open-minded. And so all education is good for that. It's good to, uh, to, to be open-minded, to learn and be subject to learn new things. And um, so, but there was some things I read. It's like repeating, like Groundhog Day. Anybody ever see that movie? Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, I'm reading the same thing. You know, and some of it I would read with my eyes closed. You know, I'd read one paragraph and fall asleep and start dreaming it. And then I open my eyes and said, that's not what that says. You know, but but God, God is such a good God to allow you to have a personal relationship with him that no matter if you go to the university or, or you study the, study the Bible yourself, is that God wants you to develop a personal relationship with him that gets your thoughts. What do you think about it? And that's what I've been careful about over the years. For many years as a youngster, like our young people, they hear what I preach, and they, right now they might not go home and study their Bibles. Okay, Lord, they're sort of learning what we tell them to learn, almost, you know. But, and I was like that as I was, Growing up, is that I would go and hear what the church was saying. It took me 
until I got into, you know, 20 years old, that I started wanting to hear the Lord talk to me. And that's what the Lord wants to do. It don't matter if you're young or old, the Lord wants to talk to you. And if you can talk to Him, and He'll talk to you. Amen. And that's a, it's all about developing that. that uh, you hear me pray, pray, give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive and a mind to understand. An ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Amen. Amen. So in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Those names or those characteristics of names is talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? I don't really have to tell you that, but uh, but if you, if you didn't know, that's the prophecy of Jesus coming. But we sometimes, as uh, as a young person, I used to see uh, the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, because it, we hear it talk the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and and so the class talking about Trinity. So I make a comment. I said, well, I want to call this the Godhead. And uh, because the Godhead consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So why wouldn't I want to use the word Trinity for Jeff? Do you use the word Trinity? I'm asking somebody to nod or something. Do you, when you talk about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you say the Trinity? You do? Uh, so where'd you get that word? <clears throat> Holy Ghost. Where'd you get the word Trinity? Three. Three. Somebody told you that word. Yep. Because it's not in the Bible. But Godhead is in the Bible. And that was my explanation in my answer. I said, I'll, I said, I'm going to say Godhead. And I'll, I'll say Trinity every now and then. But the when you uh <laughs> but I said I want to use Godhead. So his response to my thing says, you still need to use the Trinity. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm the pastor of this church. I'll use the one I want to use, right? So, but the Godhead, now the Godhead represents Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But I want, as the pastor, I want to use what is in the Word of God. Okay? Now, does it mean Trinity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it means that, but that's a man-made word. I've never... I'm, I've not seen it. Now, I don't have the, the NIV. I re preach out of the King James Version. So it might say Trinity somewhere in the, new, the NIV. I'm not sure. But not in, not in the King James Version. So we get to a part. Now, this is still part of the message for tonight. So it gets to the part. I had to read all this stuff representing the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? And give their illustrations. And then it said, down it down here, how do you explain, you know, how do I interpret what I read? I said, well, let me tell you how I interpret it to start with without reading that. What I was getting as I read all that. And I visualized when I think about the deity of God and we're thinking of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is something that some, because uh, Father and Son is not like me and Jeffrey. And young people, I want you to know that it's not like uh, your dad and you. It's not a parenthood. Okay, it's, it's not like that because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Jesus was already in heaven. He didn't just exist when he was born of the Virgin Mary. He, he existed before that. Okay? So this was my illustration. So we, we think of Father. Now, Jesus described God the Father. Now, <laughs> you can interpret the way you want to when you're preaching, but now I'm preaching tonight. God the Father is God. Okay? As that when Jesus talks about God the Father, he's talking about God. 
In the Old Testament, it talks about God, and that's God. That's the whole God. Everything about God. Get to the New Testament, we know that's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But that's God. So think about the sun, S-U-N, <coughs> that shines in the sky, the big star, the sun. Mm -hmm. right? right? And we've seen television programs where they zoomed in on the sun and you see like these flames flying out of the sun. Right? You've seen those? Or if you, it almost makes me think of a lava lamp. There's two things as I was reading that course that I was visualizing. One was the sun, the flames sticking out. And so if you look at that, that sun and the flames flying out, is that still part of the sun? Mm -hmm. That's still the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So you think about the God, God the Father, this big globe, God the Father. And within that, you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all in this big circle. Mm -hmm. The flame that sort of reaches out, I want you to visualize that as, as the Word, or Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh. But it's still connected to the sun. Mm -hmm. They're still the same. He just reached out. And then upon that, the heat from the sun, I reference as the Holy Spirit. All right? You couldn't see it, but you could feel it. Right? You, you know it, but, and, but it's all part of it together. It's all together. So here this scripture tonight points out some things that, uh, that takes Jesus beyond just being the sun. S-O-N. Now the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Through, and that's Jesus' teaching. And some people's criticisms of Jesus' teaching, is, and I heard, I, I watched one of the clips, I watched the clip sometime this week, as a Christian talking to a Jehovah's Witness, and they, they preached Jesus, but they were saying that Jesus wasn't God. You know, they said, well, who is he? He's calling to the Father and says, he, he and his Father, he's not talking to himself. Uh, that's what they're thinking. You know, that's, that's their philosophy on some things. I'm not talking about them. I'm just saying this is what I was reading on that. So a lot of things you hear Jesus talk about in the Word of God is to teach you and I how to pray, how we to talk. What do we do? We talk to the Father. We talk to the Father through the Son. The only way to get to the Father is through Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way we can have a, a connection is uh, that flame is like a hand that I give a reference to. It's like a hand, and that hand is Jesus, and we have to reach and grab that hand to be connected to the S-U-N in the reference I gave. Okay? <clears throat> But this scripture tonight, I want to go to uh, read this. For unto us a child is born. So there's going to be flesh and blood that's going to be born. Now we're coming up on Christmas. I know that it just happens that it's coming up on Christmas. It does, I don't really preach a message because of a, a holiday or anything like that. You guys know that. But here it says, unto us a child is born. So who is us? Now, Isaiah, whenever he's teaching this, you could, you could say uh, Isaiah, of course, is a man, a prophet. But is he speaking from, on God's perspective? Or is he talking on man's perspective? Man's. So my wife says man. You could look at this and say, is God talking to, through Isaiah? And, his, and, the, and, the, and the heavenly <coughs> host is saying, unto us a child is born? Maybe, maybe not. You know, so you, it, it, the Bible doesn't really make it that clear, does it? But interpreters, people that say this is what it is, they preach that as gospel. Amen? But it doesn't matter if Isaiah is saying unto us, talk about for mankind, a child is going to be born, or the heavenly host. God the Father is saying unto us, a child is going to be born. But born means there's going to be flesh coming. God, in other words, there's going to be somebody coming in the flesh. And they're going to be born. And he goes on to this. He says, and 
A child is going to be born unto us. A son is going to be given. It's going to be a male. Okay? Now, whenever I... The way I interpret John 3, 16, talks about the Son of God. Anything I see about the Son of God, I see the flesh of God. I don't see Father, Son like that. Now, we know that Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Right? She conceived the Son by the Holy Spirit. She was a virgin. Now, our young people, they've been to school. They teach this a lot younger than what they are now. Right? So it's impossible for a lady to be pregnant uh, unless, one, she goes to the doctor and the doctor does some artificial things, or unless she either had relations with a man. Or only one, only one person will God make pregnant uh, through the Holy Spirit, and that was Mary. That will never happen again. Right? So anybody that comes up after Mary that says they were pregnant and they did it any other than those other ways that I just said, they're not telling you the truth because there's only been one to be born. Right? Yeah. So he's a son, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. There's going to be a great responsibility. He's taking the responsibility of the community, of the whole world. Right? Jesus came that the whole world could be saved. The whole world could be restored in a relationship with God. Amen? Everybody would have an opportunity to, to have that. Uh, and I haven't really gotten a lot into the, the tabernacle uh, teaching and preaching, but I'm going to and talking about the veil and, uh, and, and, the, holies, and the holy of holies. I'm going to get into that, uh, but... But Jesus made the way he came that we could have that direct personal access. You know, in the Old Testament, the only ones that could enter into the Holy Holies was the high priest. But in the, in the New Testament, it says we have a high priest. His name is Jesus. Who tore down the veil that now we have direct access. Right? But so, so the one that can, uh, uh, but so he has that whole weight, the, the, all that responsibility and what's so unique about that, that wasn't something that God didn't already plan to start with. That's what sort of blows your mind is to whenever we see things persist or, or start growing in the Word of God, God is omniscient. He knew it all before any of it ever existed to start with. He knew that Adam and Eve was going to fail. He knew that, that Cain was going to slay Abel. He knew that the people was going to uh, turn their back on God. He was going to bring a flood. He knew about uh, uh, Lot. He knew about all the people that was going to serve and some that was going to turn their backs on him. He knew already when Peter was going to walk on the water here in the book of Genesis. All the way from the beginning, God knew everything. And the thing is, is what throws it all uh, and makes you say, wow, in all of this, is that throughout the word of God, if somebody would have done something different, God already knew about it. Now what's strange about this, in your life, how many different decisions could you have made today? Thousands. Probably more, right? You, well, one is I could, well, I could have chose what time I got up. I could have chose when I went to work if I was going to actually work. Or, 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 or just look at my book, right? <laughs> or, or you made a choice to be at church tonight or stay home tonight. Uh, some have a choice if they tune in tonight and watch. God, God, and the thing is that uh, this is I, I went to work. I stayed home. This will be with Marky. This will be again. You know, <laughs> but, but everything that God already knows, and but there's a, where there's an action, there's a reaction. Everything God's already got a, your whole life is already mapped out, and some call it predestined, if you want to use that word, because the Bible talks about your destiny. But you know, but people think that well, if it's, if my life is already predestined, then why have I? What difference does it make? Well, it depends on your choices. Your life is predestined to live or to go to heaven if you live for Jesus, 
But then again, if you don't know forgiveness, your life is predestined to go to hell. Does that make sense? But see, but it doesn't change. You just get on the right track. You get on the right pathway in life. And the bad part, the more you learn about God, a bad or good part, whichever way, you, because sometimes before you start studying too much, you think you know something. But then as you start studying, you realize you don't know anything. And you realize that nobody else knows anything either. We're just here trying to live the best we can to, and I try to point you toward Jesus. Because if I point you toward Jeff and make you think that Jeff knows something, then you're going to realize that Jeff, and I, as I already admitted, I realize I don't know anything. Do I know? Yeah, I know a, a lot of stuff that's written down in here. And I know what, uh, what this says. But God is way beyond that. This is just something to introduce us to God. This Word of God, that's why we like to stick with the Word of God, and that's why I like to use what's in here, because this is a tool that God uses to introduce Himself. But God is not wrapped up in this. Remember the Scripture talking about Jesus? If everything was written that He had done, that not even all the books in the world would be able to hold it. And that was just His 30 years, or His 3 years of ministry that He had done. And not even all the books in, the, in all the world would be able to hold it. So we're just, just a little portion of what Jesus actually did in ministry. Right? Let me let me get on because I want to... Y'all warming up a little bit? Okay, good. So, so the, government, the weight of the government is going to be on his shoulder and his name shall be called. His name shall be called Wonderful. Uh, his name's going to be called Counselor. So, so what, is a, what is a Counselor? Consolador. Consolador, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got it right, honey. What she said. <laughs> yeah. She said Counselor, but in Spanish. Yeah. What so it's somebody that counsels you, somebody that gives you guidance, some, somebody that sort of helps you. He's gonna be, his name is going to be called Counselor. The Mighty God. Now, whoa. That means... Here in the Old Testament, it said he's going to be called the mighty God. We already said who God is. God is the Father. And the Son. And the Son, that's right. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. I'm preaching tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, we, but we get to this part here. But and see, the thing is, uh, now here in our church, our young people are hearing it. I didn't hear it as a kid. I heard Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three different people. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, I've been to Mexico, so that's, that's why, that's why our, our Spanish people from the from the Catholic Church represent it. Uh, coming from the Father, walks on the earth is, is, is the Lord, and then the Holy Spirit, the breath, amen, of God. Amen? So, I have no problem with that. The Trinity. The Godhead. Right? So, so we look at this. What is it? The everlasting Father. The Son is going to be called the everlasting Father. Now, see, saints, it gets to the point of this. No one can really, no one, and, and, he, and they even admitted to it in the class, no one can really describe God. Right? right. <laughs> How the Father and Son and Holy Spirit can all be the same one. And what we have to be careful of, and we, and we slip up sometimes and say it for Holy Spirit, when it, the Holy Spirit is He. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus is He, the, each one is a person, in other words. Not to be, what is, uh, the pronoun correct, ever how we want it, <coughs> want to call it. But God, all three are persons. But they're all, that means each one of them has their own purpose. The Godhead, and that's what we get, get to the part when we think, when I was preaching and it started off, how Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Yeah, he sits down over there because the one of here with us is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Again, what she, she wanted to preach, ain't she? 
But, she, but she, she's right. The Holy Spirit is here. Jesus said they're going to send a comforter. So what I want you to visualize, because sometimes we see Jesus sitting at the right hand of God the Father. What does that mean? Because we sometimes, what, what does it mean? Because the Bible says that. Right? The Bible says he's going to sit at the right hand of, of the Father. But Jesus says the Father, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't see spirit. Now, maybe with spirit eyes, we might see spirit. I, I don't know. But you don't know either, right? <laughs> but if Jesus, this is where I get... When you get to the, the Rev book of Revelation, the only one you see on the throne is, is Jesus. Right? He's the one that you're worshiping, the Lamb of God. He's the one that uh, uh, you see with the, the eyes of flame of fire, the feet shining like brass, and, and the hair white as wool. That was, the, that was the picture of Jesus in the book of Revelation. So we get to this part, uh, and, and I'm not trying to persuade. I just want you to think. And develop your own. Uh, it's okay for you to think different than me. But don't think just because somebody told you this is the way it is. That that's the way it is. Because nobody knows. God's going to tell you on a personal level. And does it even matter. If I see Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I trusted in Jesus Christ. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I knew he died on the cross. I knew he rose. I believe he rose again. And I believe he's God. Amen. 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 Did he have a father? Not the same way I did. No, because that's him himself. <laughs> she, she's heard me preach for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not my first time preaching this. Just that I, I, I get it and, and I'm here that sort of stirs me up when I'm when I'm having to learn something and, and what somebody else is telling me, I've got to learn. Right? And it's okay for you to learn things and believe in certain ways. And it's okay for you. Tonight, I want you to rise up. It's okay if you believe a little different than I do. Now, you might not like it that I believe different than you do. Amen? But I, I don't care if somebody believes different than I do as long as the end result is that you call on Jesus Christ. It's the same God. Because I'm going to point you to him, and I'm going to illustrate in the usual word of God where it says that Jesus is the Father. He's the everlasting Father. He's going, he's going to be called, what is he going to be called? The mighty God. He's going to be called the everlasting Father, and he's the Prince of Peace. Of peace. Amen? Amen? So is Jesus the Father? Jesus says, I and my Father are one. But people will say, well, he's being like-minded. He's got the same mind. He's got the mind of Christ. You and I are to be one with God. Well, how can that be? How can we be God? Jesus is living in us. He becomes us, Right? If we abide in him and his word abides in us, he lives in us. And Jesus even said this whenever they tried to stone him for calling himself God. He said, didn't the Bible say that we're all gods? Right? Now, we're not saviors. We're children of God. Amen? Amen. Through Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that we're gods. I just want you to realize that. But God's given us power through the word of God. As we was talking about Sunday and the previous days, there's things that you can do as a believer in Jesus Christ, in the in the in the deity, in the Godhead, by being a child of God. There's things you can do that you're only limited by your faith. Mm -hmm. And it goes with uh, being healed. It goes with uh, your prosperity, getting uh, having uh, peace at home. Uh, your a peace of mind. We just, we just heard that Jesus wants us to have peace. He don't want you to have a conflict in your spirit. He don't want you to be conflict between each other. He don't want us to be nation against nation. It's not God's will that all these 
of wars and rumors of wars, but he said it's going to be that way. There's people that don't believe. So this thought came to mind today as I'm thinking about all this. You study hard. All of you technically are theologians. And so like what the class said, everybody's a theologian. Some may not be professional theologians. Uh, you don't get paid to do it. <laughs> you know? Uh, but you if you if you study anything, your theology is, is a study of God. So if you're studying anything about God, then you're you're technically a theologian. So get me back on track going. So where so it gets to the part of what are you believing as yourself? Are you thinking about this yourself, or is it what Jeff is teaching? And I want to, and I'm, I'm saying some of this stuff repeated it because I'm get, trying to get back on the right track. So whenever I read the Word of God, I've got things that speak specially to me. I, I mentioned that to you. This is this is this is my Bible, <clears throat> right? There's many like it, but this one is mine. I've got it marked up, written up. Some pages that got torn that has tape on it. Some of it's got some food marks on it. Some of it's got coffee stains. You know, but this one is mine. And and, and this isn't my first one. It's, it's not even my second one. Right? And uh, I'll get one, I'll start reading it, and I'll start highlighting it all over again. And Nothing great about Jeff. Uh, that's not what I'm getting up to. I'm getting to each one of you having that one-on-one -on -one time between you and the Lord. So this is where I was getting to. Don't take just somebody else telling you this is how you should believe. A pastor should not get up and tell you this is the way you should believe. A pastor should get up and say this is how you believe. Not how, like I do, don't believe the way I do, but this is the way you learn how to believe. <clears throat> and this is where I was going to go. So I was thinking about how hard we work. And somebody would say, how hard we work, Pastor? So how, how hard we study, and we spend time studying the Word of God on an individual basis. And then we come in, we pray for family, we pray for friends. Right? And we want them to have the same results that we've got. We, well, I, I would love that all my family had the same relationship that I have with Jesus Christ. Amen. But if you want the same relationship that I have with Jesus Christ, you need to pray the way I pray. You need to read the way I read. You need to come to church the way I come to church. You want to have the blessings that I got, do what I do. If you want more than I got, do more than I do. Right? Amen. So, I was thinking about this today, how we so freely give away what God's blessed us with and the other people are not willing to serve God to do it. And this sort of got me thinking about this as we was praying Sunday, talking about helping the people that's on the road and uh, holding the signs up and some are deceiving and some may not be deceiving and how uh, uh if the Holy Spirit guides you to help somebody, you, you help somebody. But even within your family, uh, and it doesn't have to be family, it could be anybody. Some people just, they want what you got, but they're not willing to serve God to get it. Amen. You want a Bible reference for that? You want a Bible example? My wife says, yeah. Okay. Peter's coming up at this temple in the book of Acts. He's coming up on this temple. He sees this man wanting some uh, arms. He's wanting some, he was handy, handy, crippled. Peter says, you know, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to you. I might be paraphrasing a little bit, but you guys know the story. Mm -hmm. He said, rise up and walk. Well, he got up and walked, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the other people, they said, give us some of what you got. 
You remember that? They, they, wanted, they wanted to be able to do that. Well, Peter, well, first of all, Peter couldn't give it to them. They needed to have a relationship with God to be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. Right? right. You want, unless the Holy Spirit jumps on you, if you want to be able to play the piano, you better take some piano lessons or you practice. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Mm -hmm. So if you say, I want to play piano like, like Miss Sharon, well, what, how does Miss Sharon play? Well, she practices. She probably took some music classes to learn how to read music. No. Me, I don't I don't read music. I've, I've read some notes. Somebody taught me what certain notes made a chord. And so if I play the piano, that's the way I play. And whatever instrument I, I may I may play, I had a little bit of study, and then because I want to do it for the Lord, the Lord blessed. Amen. Right? <clears throat> Miss Doris had joked with me and said, we've got our own country music star. <laughs> you know, she, she, and, uh, and see, the thing is, is that you, you start playing the instrument, then something like that might come to your mind. Well, I could go play over here with this group. Or I could play at that group. Groups that not God's groups. You know. Uh, but <laughs> whenever... And I'm going to close it up. Do you believe that this can be, do you believe this can be holy? It has a hole. It has a hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. She's full of it tonight, ain't she? She's so weedy. <laughs> but can this be holy? <laughs> Go ahead, tell us, tell us, Miss Millie. The music that comes out of it can be holy. The music that comes out of it, okay, were the, in the tabernacle, were the vials that the, the cup, were they holy? The instruments that they had in the, in, as they built the temple, were those All that stuff was holy. Huh? All that stuff in there was holy. All it was holy, why was it holy? It was anointed. Well, because anointed. Yeah, it was anointed. And dedicated, it was dedicated to the Lord. It was meant for that service. Right? So the same way when we prayed for the piano to, to be used for the Lord's service, we dedicated it to the Lord, therefore it became holy. So, same way as I did for this pulpit. Same way that I made a pact with God that I play a lot of different types of music. I, well, I could. There are some things I joke around with while I'm at home. But but this is dedicated to the Lord. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it gets to be, well, if you want to play this sort of way, uh, you want to be able to just pick up any instrument and dedicate your gifts to the Lord. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So back to what, what I wanted to finish up with. Whenever you think about it as when you're trying to pray for your friends and your family, we First of all, we want them all to be saved. Amen. Right? We want them all to be healed. We want them all to be financially blessed. But if you want to have, and, and believe me, is I, I've got debt. <laughs> you know, there's things in this world that, that I wish things were, were better. But God's blessed me. I got it pretty good. Even though I got debt, I got Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. So I want to say this and then and then finish up for tonight. Is that we sing the names of, of God. We're gonna have this son. We're gonna have a child. It's gonna be a son. And it's gonna be all of his names. Wonderful counselor, uh, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, right? And we all know that's the prophecy of the coming of Jesus Christ. When I was their age, no one explained it to me like that. It wasn't until I became a man that I said, Jesus is God? You know, because they, people always put him as son. You know, so this is just 
just a little scratch, a scratch and sniff type for tonight because there's so much in the Word of God that God is showing a picture of Jesus Christ. And Jesus came in the flesh to show us how to, because somebody can't believe without seeing. God came in the flesh. One, it had to be a blood sacrifice. Yeah. And the only thing that was ever righteous enough and pure enough and without spot or blemish, the only one that could ever do that was God. He's the only perfect one. Yep. Jesus says there's none, there's none good but one. When they said good shepherd, well, why are you call me good? There's only one good one. There's only one good. <clears throat> now, was Jesus saying he's not good? No, he's saying that they recognize him. He's the one. That's right. He said, well, evidently you must recognize me as God if you're saying that I'm good. If not, then don't call me good. Right? <clears throat> There's a lot tonight, wasn't it? There's a lot to sort of try to wrap your mind around. You'd be like, well, preacher, I've been doing this for 50 years. <laughs> well, good for you. Ain't no one right. But look, I want you, I want you, I want to really our young people, because sometimes our young people, they'll hear it. A, a certain a certain thing and and they they may not really grasp it but if they hear it enough if they hear it enough then they'll start thinking and say okay I can I can develop my relationship with Jesus on my own you know now I'm not gonna pick on Victoria much but Victoria is starting she's starting to get more when we start to sing I see her starting to get more into it I just want to see, I, I see everybody out there, right? You guys are just looking at me. You know, but I look and I look at everybody. But I'll notice, uh, uh, and it's great, Victoria, because the Holy Spirit has really been growing in you to, for you to start really coming out and learning how to worship and praise God on your own. And that's sort of what I was, and I'm not going to, I don't want to embarrass you. It's a compliment to say whenever people are starting to, Okay, now I'm now I'm starting to participate. Now I'm starting, to, and it is great. Here she is, sixteen, young woman, the Holy Spirit, hearing the Word of God, and I'm thankful that I'm a, a pastor that can give her what the Word of God to help her think, and get her focused Amen. to have that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship. Amen. That I'm sure her mom and dad teaches her, but to hear it by somebody else, you know, then that's. That's what we've got to have. We got to have confirmation of, of how we are living. Amen. Well, look, God is a good God. The rest of this week, I want you to enjoy this week. When you think of uh, how good your week is going or how rough it may be, there's somebody else got it rougher. Amen. Somebody doesn't have it maybe even as good as you. You want to laugh because I said rougher, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell she's on it. She's on the fire tonight. <laughs> whenever, whenever I say something, about rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want you. So Saturday we're going to be back here at five thirty, and, uh, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. We'll have some snacks, and uh, the, we're going to watch some. Uh, uh, Miss Sharon's got some things picked out. I know there's one thing picked out from a partial clip of a, one of the episodes of Chosen. I'm not sure if we're going to do more of that than that. But uh, have any of you seen any of the episodes of The Chosen? Okay, it's sort of like the old ways when they would tell the story of Jesus. But this is a, a big series of the life of Jesus. So, but it's, it's great episodes. Um, so I look forward for us to be able to have a good time. Have we already moved the TV over there? We had so so we'll probably we're probably planning on putting the TV over there. I think was our plan, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now do we still have a uh, internet service. Will it hit the Wi-Fi yeah. over there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. If not, then we're sort of like we're over here, and then we have to bring it back. Yeah, it reaches over. We tried it. He tried it before we left when we hooked it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We didn't get it over there. So we're, we're looking forward to have a great time of fellowship. So let's come and uh, it, 
it, it is coming up time for uh, to think about the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we're coming up on Saturday, pray between now and then. Lord, give me a give me the mind to be able to receive ministry. It's not just a popcorn type movie. You know, it's a chance to minister. Mm -hmm. It's a ministry. It's, it's a it's a it's a Bible thing and it's fellowship. Okay, so so come and uh, prepare between now and then. Uh, pray and ask God to give you guidance to receive this message and and then whatever the Lord laid something on her heart to pick out and uh, so we've got to sort of grab that like the Lord lays it on my heart things to preach you have to you don't have much choice but you got <laughs> when I'm up here right amen. amen if you had a good time tonight put your hands together give a little praise Let us dismiss your prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to call in your name, Lord God, and to read in the word of God. Lord, we realize that we're just people trying to learn about God. Lord, there's some things we get right and some things we get wrong. But Lord, you know our heart is to want to be right and to want to know you and to teach others how to know you on a personal level. I pray, Lord, for all those that are watching tonight, and all those that are here in the house of God, that each one of us can have a personal walk with you and know you at the level we are right now. And Lord, that you'll do the correcting of what needs to get corrected. And Lord God, that you'll uh, help us to grow. And I pray, Lord, for your safety to be upon each one of our, of our people. Father God, that you'll guide them on the highways and the byways. We ask you, Lord, that you'll show them favor, wrap your love around them, and ask you, Lord, that you would heal the sick in our church, that you would save the lost, Lord, of our family. Father God, that whatever we stand in need of, we know, Lord, that you're the answer. I pray for your safety to be upon Greg as he's out of town. I pray, Father God, that you'd be with, uh, my, again, my wife's family that's traveling, those that are out of town, Lord God, and those that are sick that couldn't be here tonight. Father God, we lift them up, uh, Brother Eugene and Miss Doris. And uh, and again, we lift up others that I request that have, uh, that's under our umbrella tonight. May you guide us by your precious Holy Spirit. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Let your word be lit, uh, real and alive in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.